Hello, Chase Lakers. Hey there, is this Jeannie? Yeah. Oh, hey, Jeannie, this is Carol from the Reasonable Sanity Podcast. Yes. I, I called a minute ago and a man answered. Was that someone there? No, you must have got a wrong number. Oh, I just hit redial. I mean, okay. unless, I, mean I, I don't think, I don't think uh, my, um, you know. Yeah, there was answer. a man. Has a man's name. So uh, okay. Probably well, just the wrong number. Yeah, probably. Well, anyway, I can go ahead and bring him on with you. Uh, like uh, he's doing his show right now, and I think he's getting ready to introduce you onto the show. Okay, I'll be ready. Okay, man, I have got cold sweats right now. Woo! Cold right. sweats. What? What? What's happening? Oh, I don't. I'm not allowed to talk about it. I just have to bring you on. And here, here I'm going to go ahead and hit the button. Okay. Beep, 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 beep. So yeah, this is the idea that's going to really get me there, folks. Coming up next commercial break, you'll hear the latest offer um, I have to better the world. But first, we're going to talk to an expert on falling in love with prisoners right after this. And we are back. I'm Ryan Token. This is Reasonable Sandy Podcast. And with us tonight, we have a great guest. Uh, she is an expert of all things and the author of Love and Sex in Prison, Jeannie Graham Scott. Welcome to the show, Jeannie. Oh, good. Glad to be here. By the way, we changed the title. To, it's now called uh, Women with Partners in Prison. Oh, okay. Women's with Women with Partners in Prison. Okay, great. Thank you. And if people want to learn more about that book, they can go to JeannieGramscott.com. And speaking of the women part, um, that was part of one of how I wanted to lead off of this. Usually, it's a woman that's falling for a male prisoner. In the next 30 seconds or so, can you explain to me why? Sure. Sure, I'd be glad to. By the way, the website is uh, changemakerspublishingandwriting.com. That's the one with the books on it. Oh, okay. Um, Carol, you need to give me better notes, Carol. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm next sorry. time. Sorry. Next time, better notes. All right. Sorry about that. Uh, I've had cold sweats all day. Yes, it's the cold. Yes, exactly. I, I blame her cold sweats, um, but it's certainly her fault. <laughs> okay. I, I'm sorry, uh, Jeannie. So you can go to Jeannie Graham Scott. To, dot com to learn about other things, but to go to her books, you got to go to uh, Change Makers, I think you said. Which... Right, Change Makers Publishing and Writing dot com. Perfect. So, uh, yeah, go ahead. Why, do, why is it always women? Why are these women falling in love? Oh, okay. No, I mean, well, some of them are lonely. Uh, they've been in bad relationships. Uh, they feel like, you know, they're really listened to because the prisoners have, you know, not very much else to do. So, you know, they have their full attention. And so, and also, I don't know, for some women, there's this attraction of the bad boy. And so that's, for some some women are drawn by that. And I get that, because I, too, am attracted to bad boys, in a sense. So it uh, looks like we got a, uh, a caller on line nine. Line nine, what's your question to Jeannie about prisoners and why women fall in love with them? Hey, hey, hey Jeannie, Jeannie, my name's Silky, and... Uh... Like I'm single, so are you saying that like you know if I if I do like a ten year bid, I will find love? Well, I I mean if, if basically there are pen pal organizations that connect women with prisoners, and there are about two hundred thousand women who are in relationships with prisoners. I mean it's an amazing uh, statistics, but um, uh, many of them meet through these pen pal groups. Okay, so but how do I get you know to be in one of these pen pal groups? Well, I mean, are you a prisoner? Oh no, no no! I'm not a prisoner, but you know I'm looking no, for no, love. No no no! Well, I mean these are and, uh, these these links. The Tinder pool uh, is real weak right now. Primarily, they link male prisoners with women who are looking for male prisoners. Uh, but if you're not a prisoner, you you wouldn't get into one of these pen pen pal groups. Can I just cut catfish? You know, one of these prisoners, and then you know maybe once he gets out, you know I'll be like, look, it's me. I was here the whole time. I, I mean, I don't recommend being dishonest in these relationships. So, I mean, you can do what you want to do, but I don't recommend doing that. How can I sign up for it, though? Like, how do I... Uh... Well, I mean, look, put in Google, you know, uh, pen pals, uh, prisoner pen pals. Well, last time I did that, it brought up, like, a really dirty website. So, like, do you have, like, an exact, like, foundation or anything? Or Well, I mean, in my book, I list list some of the sites. Uh, prisoner fellowship. I mean, there, there are a number of different sites, um, but um, I can get your book you know, on Amazon. It's it's on Amazon. Yes, it's called uh, Women with Partners in Prison, and it lists some of the pen pal sites. Women with Parkinson's in prison? No, w women with partners in prison. 
Parkinson's. That Parkinson, Chris Partners. Okay. Okay. So yeah. So there you go, caller. Just go ahead and go to the Parkinson's website or whatever. So it's not par- Parkinson. It's a disease. Sorry, I got uh, Carol. Carol almost like went down there for a second, so I kind of got distracted there. I, I sorry, sorry, Jeannie. I, she is she has been sick lately, but I need her. So okay. Looks like we got a caller on line three. Line three. Uh, what's your question for Jeannie? Hey, Gene, I'm ready to do this for real. Um, What crime would you recommend uh, to commit to get into prison into a way that the women will be most attracted to me? Well, I'm not recommending people commit crimes to get into prison. So I would say, you know, just find some other way to meet women. Um, I, I wouldn't recommend going into prison. Well, no, I, I mean, I, I'll do, I'll do it if that's if that's how you if that's how you do it, I'll do it. I'm, I'm saying, should I, should I like steal a car? Should I should I try uh, sell drugs? Like, what impresses you? I'm not going to recommend anybody commit crimes to get into prison to be to meet women. I mean, there are other ways to meet women, and I, I would not suggest that. I mean, I think this is like a prank call. I guess I, I guess this question may be something like, what crime is most common for women? Most attractive to women. Well, there is, there are some. I mean, there there's some of the murderers who uh, attract prisoners, and some of them have gotten married while while they've met people in prison. The Menendez brothers is for what and one example. You're absolutely right. I've seen some of these stories, Jeannie, and they're great. If you could hold on just for a second, Jeannie, uh, everybody, here's that commercial I was telling you about earlier in the show. Jeannie, if you could hold on for maybe it's about 60 seconds. Sure. For, uh, it's for our new program. Yes. Don't be afraid to join this program, everybody. We'll be right back after this. Hi, Ryan Token here from Reasonable Sanity Podcast. And when I saw all the success of the Alpha Male Boot Camp programs sweeping the nation, I knew instantly this was something I needed to cash in on. So without further delay, let me introduce you to the Alpha Ryan Mail Token Boot Camp. And this is what we're all about. Lay down in that tub of ice cubes, you weak natal phonetic human. Sir, yes sir! What do you want in life? To be a beta? A bravo, maybe? I want to be an alpha male. And have a good girlfriend. And how you gonna get that, Whiskey Zulu? By, by, by laying in a in a ice for 15 hours straight, sir. Now I know what you're thinking. So Ryan, how is this any different than something Andrew Tate would make up in a typical afternoon? And that answer is easy. Here at the Alpha Ryan Mail Token Boot Camp, we are solely focused on the importance of you paying us to make you lay down in a tub of ice while an alpha like me degrades you for profit. And then you get all the girls. Are you feeling alpha yet? Or are you ready to give up like a kappa? I won't stop! I want to be laid so badly! You look like you want to tap out like a delta. Maybe even a foxtrot. I can't see anymore. My skin's on fire. And we will help you. All you need to do is sign up on the Alpha Ryan Mail Token Bootcamp Guru website, and then simply dark web us eighteen thousand dollars from your preferred non-U.S. bank. Once that money is cleared, we will send a van of men to remove you from your home and bring you to my boot camp so you can finally become an alpha male and get the girls. So don't delay. Well, congratulations, alpha male. Your 15 hours are over and you can get out of my ice tub. Sir? Hello? Sir? And we are back. I'm Ryan Token. This is Reasonable Sandy Podcast. We have with us Jeannie Graham Scott, who's talking about why females fall in love with males in prison. Jeannie, let me let me start out now, kind of tied in with my commercial there. We're kind of in the same um, arena a little bit. My program was to help guys who had trouble get girls get girls and your program is kind of showing guys who shouldn't have access girls are getting girls so maybe there's some overlap there and i don't know maybe carol could carol could you have somebody talk to her people about maybe combining those yeah one thing i might point out is that a lot of times these relationships may continue while the man's in prison but after he gets out and you know he has other contacts with other people that often these relationships break up you know, or the or the woman, you know, it's sort of like he's back in t- with reality, and the, some of the reasons that the male 
got to prison, you know, end up surfacing. I mean, like the violence against, you know, he's attacked people or, or he's done other things that are bad, and now he's directing it to to this woman or he feels trapped by her that, you know, she has this relationship and he wants to go out and meet other people. So she's his new warden and he ain't having none of that. That's what I'm hearing. Yeah, I mean, I mean, some sometimes. I mean, some of them work out really, really well, and they uh, they have this very uh, enduring relationship because they are able to communicate, you know, through letters, through f- phone calls, occasionally through visits. You know, so they they may develop a very, very close relationship that endures. But for other people, I mean, like the uh, you talked about catfishing. Well, I mean, sometimes. You know, he's sort of playing her because, you know, uh, he has nothing else to do with his life in prison. Line five, you're on the air. Line five, what's your question for Jeannie? Hey, Jeannie, how are you? Good. Good. Um, So I had a dream that I was in that movie Fear, and Mark Wahlberg was finger-banging me on the Ferris wheel. And I was wondering, does that mean that my prison boyfriend is cheating on me? No, it doesn't mean anything. I mean, it, it. You know, it might be. I mean, if you if you have had a difficult conversation with him, that could trigger a dream. But if it just seems to come out of nowhere, um, it probably doesn't mean anything. I did watch the movie Fear before I fell asleep. Yeah. Finger blasting happens in that movie, so it, it it very well could be just your brain projecting the finger blasting that she received in that movie, right? Right. Okay, so it looks like we got a line six. Line six, what's your question for Jeannie? Yeah, uh, actually, it's not a question. I can attest to this being true. Um, Yeah, I had a friend. He was the mailman for the prison over there. And uh, he said every time he went over there, all the women loved, you know, when he he pulled out his mailbag. And they just loved him. They loved him. And that's how, you know, he found love. Okay, now the are you talking about the women being in prison, or you're talking about the, the men getting letters from women? Well, it, it went both ways. He was the courier, so he was moving, the, you know, the goods for everybody, you know. Oh, I, they I loved see. Him okay, over there. but they're pr- in prison. Is this Barbara Eden? Am I what? Barbara Eden, your genie. I remember the show you were on in the '60s. What was the show? Well, I dream of genie. That was you, right? No, it wasn't. No, no, this is genie. Oh. Scott, that, I think that was a Graham Hold Scott or something like that. So, okay. Oh. Uh, no, but I, w- I was going to say something about when you talk about the mail. Um, there's, a, there's a problem with contraband and drugs in prisons, and this is both in, w- in women's prisons and the male prisons. And often these these networks of um, people, they, they will deliver drugs, and sometimes the women are drawn into, you know, becoming couriers I mean, or, or bringing things into the prisons. And so that's sort of part of this network of uh, contraband and drug uh, drug delivery. Let me ask you a question, because I know love in prison was something that you studied and you've kind of, in a sense, became a good expert on. I also read something that the the men who can't find love in there, there's this thing they have you ever heard of a Fifi? No, I haven't. Okay, so it's basically this device that is created. It is contraband, so it's relative to what you were just saying a second ago, and it is smuggled in. It's a mixture of a rubber glove, uh, socks, some kind of banding, and then uh, usually, you know, it's, you know, six to, you know, eight inches, and and then that becomes their girlfriend. So um, sometimes maybe, maybe those shouldn't be contraband, and then we wouldn't have to worry about women falling in love with prisoners. What do you think of that? I don't know. I mean, I think people want a, a, a personal relationship. I mean, you know, I've, I've been also working with AI, and I know that there are all these sort of AI robots. That are, I mean, they can look very, very realistic, and uh, you know, they're sort of, you know, like the there were these sex dolls at one time, and now, now they're much more realistic than they have been. So, you know, maybe that that could be, you know, something that becomes uh, brought into the prison. But no, I don't. I I didn't read anything about that. Uh, and by the way, it's, it's it's women with partners in prison, not love and sex in prison. Oh, okay, yeah, no, that and that makes a lot of sense because it, it, they probably can't really have sex, right? Because they can't touch them through, except for maybe through the. No, the... normally, I mean, there are four states that have conjugal relationships, and they are, they're they're able to come in in those four states. Um, I, I seem I seem to recall it, New York, Washington, um, and there there are two others. Uh, Connecticut, I think, is one of them. Uh, but anyway, there are, four, there are four states that allow it. Most do not. 
but it, that, that they do find that it contributes to, uh, you know, better relationships in the prison. I mean, the people get quieter, there's less violence. So it it does contribute to working things out in the prisons. What's your name? Um, with Jeannie. What's your question? Hi, hi, Jeannie. You don't think it's kind of, you know, strange to, you know, kind of hook people up who have done major crimes and stuff with, uh, you know, a dating life? That's not like a... Shouldn't these women be looking for, you know, people with careers or, you know, I don't know. Well, I mean, you could say what people should do. And really, uh, ideally, you know, the women, you know, might might have ordinary relationships and seek careers. But if if that's not happening... I mean, I'm just talking about what what's what is occurring, and so some of the women are lonely. They've had bad relationships, and so they're drawn into the relationships with prisoners. And maybe that's not the ideal situation, but that's sort of the reality that exists. Are they like hitting bottom or something? You know, like I mean, I, I'm pardon me, ma'am, but you know, I'm no convicted felon or anything, and you know, like shouldn't a woman be more interested in people like me? Well, they should be, but you know, maybe um, you know they're not getting something from a relationship. They're not able to have a relationship. Um, you know, maybe they're you know uh, if they're very career oriented, maybe um, it's discouraging men who feel like they're being overshadowed by the women. You know, there are all kinds of dynamics that play out, and um, you know, you can realistically say, you know, I would you know, I'd love to have a woman in a relationship, but so, if that doesn't so happen, so you're like a you're like a pimp. For prisoners, what is that? What you do? You, you kind of pimp out prisoners? Or do you get like well, a cut? Well, I'm not. I'm not advocating they, anything. I'm just saying. I'm just talking about what what's the situation. Do they like pay you money to get like six? No, she's just telling stories. That's all she's doing. She's just making it. I kind of just telling stories. Oh. So yeah, I'm not an advocate for this happening or not happening. But but this is one of the realities that. Um, you know, they're, 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 they're missing something in their life, and they're drawn to prisoners. That's true. All right, line seven, what's your question for Jeannie? Hi, Jeannie. This is Mindy. How are you doing? Good. I've read two of your books. In fact, I just put down the one on transform AI transforming prisons and jails. Super fascinating read. Oh, okay. I don't care about that so much, but uh, what I wanted to know about was what can you tell me about your experience as a podcast scam expert, being a podcast scam expert? Tell me about that. Well, I mean, uh, I've been an expert on scams. I mean, maybe not dealing with podcasts specifically, but um, there are many digital scams where people will, uh, imposter scams where people pretend to be representatives of banks, of the federal government, and... Uh, or, or people that they're just not? No, 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 they're not. I mean, you know, you people will say, um, you, you get an email from somebody. I mean, I had this experience myself, where somebody, uh, I got an email from PayPal that um, I, I was charged for something, which I wasn't charged for. And I got went on to PayPal, and I found that, you know, I wasn't being charged for it. And I made the mistake of of calling the number in the email, and you, you shouldn't do that. And but I mean I I don't know it, I, I just happened to call that number, and so somebody who ver- sounded like they were a PayPal representative started you know reading me and saying, well we need to have your bank account so we can deposit the the, the refund in your bank. You know, in other words, they kind of draw you in to get get information you from you. You got socially engineered, honey. Jeannie, I've seen oh, this. Good. Over and over again. I know which one you're talking about. I've seen it over and over again. It, and I'm glad it didn't get past you because it shouldn't. Never trust the voice on the phone is my no, general. No, no. And I, I ended up, they, they were going to have me go to all these places to get gift cards for them, about $10,000 worth of this gift card. And as soon as I mentioned getting gift cards, I mean, that's a sure sign that it's a scam. But anyway, so instead of going to, I, I led them to think. I mean, they basically had control of my phone or they, they had access to my phone. My phone. And so they were sort of leading me around, um, and, and then supposedly I'd given them bank information, so they cra- claiming that they were going to take money out of my bank if I didn't do this. But and so instead of going to, I, I led them to think I was going to get gift cards, but instead I went to my bank and I said I'm being scammed, and they closed down my account. And so I, I didn't lose any money. You should. You, oh. you really talk a lot, and I like that because I like your book so much. Oh, oh my good, god! Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank. You. All right, line three, what's your right, question? I love you, bye. Hey, 
Hi, Gene. Um, I couldn't bring myself to do. I'm calling um, back in. I couldn't bring myself to do a murder. Um, but I punched a baby. Um, I thought that was like, kind of close to a murder, and there were like a lot of witnesses. So, um, like, what do I do um, next? Like, what's my next step? Well, I'm not going to advise you on how to commit crimes. Um, oh no, so, I, already, I punched um, a baby. I thought that was kind of close to murder. I couldn't bring myself to kill. I just can't do that. Well, but I don't, so I, I I don't a, recommend an anybody committing crimes uh, uh, to meet women. Uh, so I'm, I'm not going to give well, you well, advice what I, on what, what to do. What do I do next? Do I take a plea deal, or what do I do? Well, you go to the police and turn yourself in, and they'll arrest you. And okay, then you all take right, it okay, and then that'll get me in the system faster. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. I'll call you. Um, I'll call you once they get me uh, booked in. Thank you. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you for calling. All right, Jeannie, it looks like we got one more here. Uh, line one, what's your question for Jeannie the Great? Oh, hey there, Ryan. Uh, big fan. Uh, this is uh, Eddie. I listen all the time. I'm actually in prison. And I know you said earlier that the first prisoner to call in would get Jeannie's phone number. And I'm in the Roy, New Mexico Correctional Facility. Yeah, I don't want to give out my phone number. So well, that's... No, I'm looking for a... Um, girlfriend outside of prison i would sign up for one of the prisoner the pen palace uh groups that they can connect you oh no um ryan said he'd give us your phone number he's like uh, no, well, I, I i didn't allow him to give out my phone number so i'm sorry right we have a problem genie and i should pro carol can you pull that email back for um yeah it looks like our phone number is nine two five three okay is that Jeannie, is that the one? Thank you so much. Well, I, I'm, I'm gonna... not going to give it. You know, if anybody tries to call from a prison or somebody else, I'm not going to respond. Well, no, there'll, I, be, I, there'll I, be an answering machine on it. Jeannie, I, I, I have uh, phone cards from uh, another woman. She bought them for me. But we're through. Like, we're officially uh, not an item anymore. So I am free, and I would like to call you. I know 925 is not too far from New Mexico. Yeah, I'm not interested in uh, having a relationship with anybody who's called this program, so I would advise you not to call. Okay. So anybody who wrote down Jeannie's number out there that Carol just gave on the air, please rip that up, throw it away. Please do not call it. Um, but I, Carol, I can still call because um, me and but her we did call it to you. So it's a little different with you. We emailed it to you. But anybody else there who wrote it down, you don't have our permission to do it. Um, okay, because I won the contest. Yeah, unfortunately, we did give it to this inmate. I, I apologize. We do have a problem here. Yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not anybody, with inmates or anybody else, I'm not accepting calls from people I don't know. It won't be collect, okay? I'll I'll, uh, I'll call you later, yeah, I, though, No, Jeannie. I don't care. I mean, I'm not interested in phone calls from people I don't know. No means no, Eddie. Yeah, fair, fair enough, Eddie. Just it, it, that sounds like she's not interested in prison dating you. I'm sorry, I misled earlier. Carol, you said she well, was expert in prison dating, like she dates prisoners. I have it on recording. No, I no, I mean, I wrote a book about how uh, relationships, but I'm I'm not involved in a relationship. I, myself, I have it on recording. And I don't plan to be. I have it on recording that you said uh, I could have her number and we would. Try to start a relationship. So I'll talk to you later, Jeannie. I, I've well, okay. Hang I mean, it may be that you Goodbye. were given this information incorrectly. I did not give that permission. Okay. Yeah, she didn't. But thanks for calling. And, and Jeannie, I apologize. Um, I could probably get the lawyer to cut you, I don't know, a check for 500 bucks or something for, for you know, that mistake in case somebody doesn't rip the number up like I told them to. Okay. Well, yeah, if you want to do that, mail it to me. If you have my address, you can do that. Well, I, I I would prefer to put it through a, a bank routing system. No, I'm not. I'm not interested in giving you my bank information. I use dark web though. I use dark web, so I got to use it non non U.S. banks to do my business. I don't know. No, I'm not, I'm not interested in that then. Okay. Okay. Well, um, then then we won't give you that five hundred dollars. Then I'll I'll tell my lawyer that you passed up on it. Okay. Yeah, right. I, I passed on it. So good. Okay, that was a very smart move. That was a very smart move, Jeannie. Probably the smartest move I've ever seen from you. So, um, everybody, I just wanted to thank uh, Jeannie Graham Scott for coming on ag uh, as again. Uh, no, was she here before, Carol? Why did I say again? I think she was a podcast scam expert before. Oh, okay. Is that why it says again here? Okay. By I the guess way, you any prisoners out there that didn't get Jeannie's number, it's 925 three. I, you're not supposed to give my number out, and I'm sorry, um, anybody. I will not respond to any phone calls that I get from anybody. We just told prisoners, 
I, I already told you not to give out my number, so you did it again. So I'm sorry. Prisoners only, everybody. No, it's I'm not. It's for anybody. Nobody, nobody call. I'm not going to answer the phone. My my lawyer really is going to ask to pay you a thousand dollars because it happened twice now. Can you officially turn that down or accept it? No, I I'm not. I'm turning it down. I'm turning it down, and I'm not answering any more phone calls from anybody. For, who calls results of this program. I told you not to give out my phone number. You answered for us. You did it again. I'm sorry. I apologize. Carol, I told you, Carol has a cold. She's 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 batting about, uh, you know, 20% today. I'm not going to lie. It is her fault. It's COVID, man. All right. Well, anyway. Uh, I have COVID. All right. What, whatever it is, I'm not going to answer the phone at all today. Yeah, that's probably wise. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's probably wise. We I do know we're syndicated to, in prisons. Um, and Carol, there's no way she's going to want to edit this thing. She's just going to upload it. So I, I, yeah, I apologize. This is going to be, I'm so sorry, ma'am. This is going to be a problem. I apologize. There's nothing I can do. Okay. Just, just so you know, I mean, I'm, uh, and again, once again, the, the book is the, um, women with partners in prison. Women's with Parkinson's in prison. Don't forget to go to JeannieGramholdScott.com to get Women's with Parkinson's in prison, everybody. No, it's on Amazon. It's on Amazon. It's on Amazon and... Uh, and it's, it's ChangemakersPublishingAndWriting.com. Yes, that's what I said. JeannieGramholdScott.com. Yes. No, I, that's wrong. I told you that's wrong. That's, that's a different... Uh, that's a website from being, doing speaking. But if they're interested in the book... Or or my writing, it's changemakerspublishingandwriting.com. Is the book still called uh, Love in Prison? No, it's and... not. It was the, the name was changed. Ma'am, is this you on the website? Yes. <laughs> Look at the way you're dressed. Um, anyway, um, I, I do have to go back to work, so... It's a Saturday. It's a Saturday. And it's it's got to be four p.m. There. You shouldn't have to work. You should have hours to well, spend. Well, I, I do work. I, I I have a client that I'm working for. So anyway, uh, you know, it's been nice being on your program, and uh, good luck with it. Yeah, I hope you come back again. Thank you, Jeannie Graham Holt Scott. Everybody. Bye bye. Bye, Jeannie. Stay podcast. Good night, everybody. Hello, Change for Publications. Oh, hey, Jeannie. Yeah. Hey, hey, baby. Um, I'm calling you from the New Mexico prison down here in Roy, New Mexico. And this, uh, isn't, this is her assistant. What is this regarding? Oh no, you just said you were Jeannie, and I recognize your voice from the radio show you were on yesterday. Yeah, uh, I'm I, not talking to anybody from the radio show. I'm sorry. Ma'am, I, my phone ma'am. number was given out inappropriately. So yeah, goodbye. No, ma'am, I'm a prisoner. <laughs>